Creatures of the Night, it's your girl Tanti. Let's talk about AEW Rampage, since I'm pretty sure most of y'all ain't see it. Uh, we did start it off with Orange Cassidy versus Alex Reynolds. Alex Reynolds got the jobber's entrance, and John Silver is ringside. This match was pretty much a handicap match, and it's one of those things where it's like they always put Orange Cassidy in a situation where it's like him against the world and how he always come on top. Pretty much the John Cena treatment. I'm over it. Uh, Orange Cassidy is pretty much a handicap match with these guys and they keep distracting the referee and both of them are getting physical with Orange Cassidy. However, Orange Cassidy takes the win uh, with the spirit of John Cena and giving Alex Reynolds the orange punch for the win whatever now after this renee paquette gets in the ring and she's interviewing him while she tried to ask questions about the whole thing with trent beretta and then trent beretta actually comes out he comes out he's wearing their new shirt that they had um you know what i don't know what it said but it says something about orange and trent or best friends uh when the big one whatever some new shirt that they debuted last week or the week before when they had the tag team match. Now, he comes out and he's still wearing that shirt like it's like they're friends or whatnot, but he's walking towards Orange Cassidy who's already in the ring. And then out of the blue, here comes Chuck Taylor, the useless ass. I don't know where he came from, most likely coming from the audience, and he jumps into the ring too. And the way he gets in the ring, it almost looked for a quick second, at least to me, that I thought that he was probably gonna attack Orange Cassidy from behind. Well, maybe I just saw what I wanted to see, but it almost seemed like that because he was not there when Orange Cassidy had his match. So he came out of the blue, he comes out there, and when Trent Beretta sees him, Trent Beretta falls back because those two are in the ring and it's just one of him, so he doesn't get in there. But then Chuck Taylor ends up leaving the ring too because it's like as if he don't want to choose between Trent Beretta or Orange Cassidy because they're both his homeboys and he's nothing without them, pretty much. So he just ends up falling back and then he leaves through the crowd, random as fuck. I don't know what we're going to do with Chuck Taylor, but we need to keep the momentum going about Trent Beretta being a heel. I've been praying on this for the longest. Tony Khan, don't mess this up for me. Now, after that, we do have uh, Anna J backstage. She's doing a promo. She's upset about what's going on with the women's division. Everybody's kissing each other, lesbian action, all these things. She don't want to see it. She wants to have matches. Now, um, she was on the match later on. Uh, no, no. Actually, no. She wasn't on this show. She was on Ring of Honor yesterday, and I think she's going to be on Collision. I'm not 100% sure. Whatever the hell is going on over there. Um, they're really trying to bring up Anna J a a little bit more. And that's great too, but I wish they would put her maybe in a storyline. I think maybe that will catch people's attention because we kind of forgot about you, homegirl. Up next, we have Julia Hart versus Layla Hirsch. And I like Julia. I'm not going to take nothing away from her. She's absolutely improved. And I've loved what they've done with her. Well, not, not lately. But I love the build to where she's at right now with the TBS title. However, she's in the ring with Layla Hirsch. And Layla Hirsch can, could, could whoop anybody's ass, even some of the men ass. And Julia Hart, I'm looking at this, I'm like, she's a champion. Why would she lose, you know? And she ends up um, taking the L here. And I just couldn't believe it because I'm just like, Layla Hirsch is an amazing wrestler. Matter of fact, last year she had, to me, one of the best women's match with Athena. That match was just damn near fucking perfect. And, and and I'm thinking about that moment and now I'm looking at her in the ring with Julia and I'm just like, we haven't seen Layla on AEW TV for so long. And here she comes taking the L against Julia. Like I said, I don't want to say nothing from Julia, but it's just unbelievable. It really is. It's unbelievable to me because Layla's on another level and she kind of has to dumb it down a little bit just to be on AEW TV. I ain't feeling it. Whatever. Next, we had Uncle Don. He's backstage with Kyle Fletcher and um, Powerhouse Hobbs. He's big, he's black, he's jack, anyone can get it. Um, he's doing all the talking once again. I don't mind that, but sometimes I'm just like, I really wanna hear the other guys speak. 
Hobbs can speak. Uh, Fletcher can speak. Takeshta, I would like to know if you can speak, if they give him a moment to talk. Um, what he's saying is, is that the two of them are going to be facing Claudio Castagnoli and um, Brian Danielson for a collision tomorrow night. And he said, look, I, I don't even give a damn if y'all win or not. It's not about winning. It's about getting your hands on Brian Danielson and beating the fuck out of him so that when he goes against Will Ospreay the following weekend, that Will Ospreay will just be able to take a win because Brian Danielson will pretty much be crippled and can't do anything. And um, I found it very interesting that he would say that it didn't matter that they won because I think people watch it, who's watching this already feel like they will not win but he's already saying, doesn't matter if you win. Just whoop his ass and make sure he can't do shit by the time the pay-per-view comes on. Very interesting. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, for the moment, maybe some of y'all been waiting for, um, the storyline with Ruby Soho and Angela Parker and them. Finally, we got the match between Zack Knight and Angela Parker. Zack Knight comes out with his sister, and Harley Cameron, whatever her role is in, in that group, they all come out together. Angela Parker's by himself. Ruby Soho had already broke up with his ass, so he's on his own. Um, very interesting to see Zack Knight finally having a match on the main roster because he's been in um, Ring of Honor. Not a whole lot, but he's been over there. So we got a, t a taste of what he can do for those of you who've never seen Zack in the ring. Now... Lord have mercy. Zach Knight, you know, this guy, he's like 220 something pounds. And I found that very hard to believe. I really don't. I look at him and I don't see 220 something pounds. But whatever, that's not important. He beat the fuck out of Angela Parker. Angela Parker, I, I mean, I saw this coming. I think we all saw this coming. But, um, you know, he gave, he gave a little defense, a little something. But this was really about Zach debuting on the main roster. And I think he looked absolutely amazing. Um, a lot of people are not familiar with Zach. He's a um, real life brother with Soraya. They've been wrestling since they were um, shit minors. And so they, they've been there and done that. Zach has finally made it to a, a major uh, promotion. He's been wanting this for so long. And it was really great to see him. Um, while this wasn't a squash, this is definitely a, a, an ass whooping uh, of a lifetime for Angela Parker. And I thought for a second, maybe Ruby Soho might come out and, and, and try to show some stuff of support, but she didn't, which was interesting. Uh, he was bleeding from what I have no clue what the hell happened. He was bleeding and he still was trying to put up a fight. And it was so interesting to see Angela Parker finally doing some singles action and it's just like he's doing a little something something but this really wasn't for him to win uh, the referee ended up kicking out Soraya and Harley because they're just getting way too fucking involved you tell them to get the fuck out of here I got a match to officiate and you're distracting me so match continues without the ladies Zack Knight ends up taking the win and this right here was not bad at all and I just thought it was really um, interesting because he goes and said during right right before the end of the match while angela parker is laying there pretty much you know choking on his own blood he was like don't worry i'll take care of ruby and then all of a sudden angela parker just gets up and he's like what and then he really started fighting back and then yeah y'all know what ends up happening he gets his ass whooped and loses the match very interesting um, Soraya and Harley, they come back out and they're all yelling at him. And then here is, um, Zach wiping the blood off of him and wiping it all over his body. And I'm just like, bro, this, this is fucking gross. Why are you doing that? Very, um, uh, interesting. I can't wait to see more of Zach on the roster. I think he's a great addition to AEW. Now, after this, we have Rocky Romero and, uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Rocky has a match with uh, what's the one with the international title? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Roderick. And he has a match, a eliminator match. You guys know eliminator match. I hate those matches. If you win, um, then you get to face that same person for the actual title the next time. Hate that they do that. 
Um, so Rocky was like, he was going, he's going to go against him. He's going to win the eliminator match. And then he's going to go and he, and, and beat Roderick for the actual title. Now, Kyle O'Reilly, he, he don't really give a fuck. He's just like, Hey, I would like to have a match with you. And if you win the title, shit, I would like to be the first one to go against you for the title. And you know, they dap it up or whatever. And then Rocky leaves. And then here's the undisputed kingdom. Roderick is just like, Oh, so you coming for my title when really he's not really coming for the title but you, you know if he has an opportunity to get it i'm pretty sure he would want to have the international title regardless of who has it and he kind of felt some type of way because when rocky said that he would beat roderick for the title that he could have a match with him and he didn't defend it like as if saying well you you're not gonna beat my friend for the title and i'm just like so you being salty because you wanted him to say that he, you wouldn't lose the title whatever little friendship drama um you know roderick seems to feel some type of way and he ends up walking off now main event jay white matt seidel actually a pretty great match we had the ass boy who's a ringside and obviously getting involved but with that bullshit aside, um, if they didn't have the ass boys there, this could have been so much better without all the interference and distractions. Matt Seidel, super talented, usually helps everybody go over. And that's one thing I do enjoy about him, that he's one of those guys who's for um, the business and he wants to help the younger talent. He wants to help get people over. In the meantime, we get really great performances out of him. Absolutely enjoy Matt Seidel and the rain. And he had really great chemistry with Jay White. But like I said, all this other foolishness going on ringside with the ass boys. Um, Jay White ends up taking the, the win with a Blade Runner. What's new? Um, but I absolutely enjoyed seeing Jay White just by himself in the ring doing stuff. On, well, should I say on his own? No. But you know what I mean. Like him in singles competition, it just feels right. I don't mind the whole him being part of a trios. It just feels like he should be doing more single stuff rather than having titles with two other people, if you catch my drift. But Rampage is Rampage. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Nothing to be all uh, uh, excited about. It's skippable, but there are some things that maybe you want to pay attention to. Definitely want to see the whole Trent Beretta, Orange Cassidy saga playing out more like on Collision or Dynamite. Um, you know, Rampage, sorry, not that important. But the bigger show, I think a storyline like that should be playing out more over there. But we got Collision and Battle of the Belts tomorrow, so I'll be back for that. If you want to watch me, watch it live. Well, we got the chat. Everyone's having a good time, a great vibe. Come on by. If not, I'll be posting a review as always. I'll see you guys then. Bye.